In this video, I am going to convince you that Francis Ngannou will go down as the most influential fighter in the entirety of Dana's tenure as head of the UFC. To understand why, we need to correct the record of what actually happened between Francis Ngannou, Dana White, and John Jones. There are too many lies, half-truths, and outright misunderstandings that have muddied the waters of reality. We need to first start off by clearing those waters and getting to the bottom of exactly what occurred over that two-year span. Our story starts as John Jones wins his final fight at light heavyweight. While interviewing Jones immediately after the fight, Joe Rogan informed Jones of the magnitude of his record-setting performance. Not only did you win this fight, but you now have won the most championship fights ever in the history of the sport, so congratulations for that as well. Thank you, man. Right after that, Rogan asks for an update on Jones's long-promised move up to heavyweight. Now, John, you've speculated about going up to heavyweight. You've talked about your future. After this fight, is, is that what you want to do, or are you thinking that maybe you want more fights at light heavyweight, maybe even possibly a rematch with Dominic Reyes? You know, I'm going to have to talk to my coaches and figure out what we're going to do. Tonight, I got... Uh... Jones goes on to semi-deflect to discuss the presence of his grandmother by his side, but importantly makes no indication one way or another of his future intentions. But let's skip ahead one full week to get a better look into Jones' psyche at the time. Jan Blachowicz, in his post-fight interview after defeating Corey Anderson in their rematch, had the following to say. With a big victory, you could earn a potential light heavyweight title shot. The guy's right there. You want to tell him something? You promise me that in the show when I meet you. You are next. Let's do this. Tell me when, tell me, give me the place and time. To me, nothing about this interaction hints that Jones is done with his days at light heavyweight, but plans always change. With the massive upheaval caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, all the UFC's plans were shaken up and new decisions had to be made. Okay, so for starters, I'm going to have to censor profanity in multiple instances because YouTube will undoubtedly remove this video if I don't. That aside, let's skip forward to May 28th, 2020, specifically to an interview Dana did with Brett Okamoto that seemed to ignite the initial spark of the rift between Jones and the UFC. For the amount of money John Jones is asking for, it's not going to happen. You couldn't be asking for a more absurd amount of money at a worse time. John quote tweeted that initial interview and stated the following at 7.56 p.m. the same day. It's interesting to just sit here and watch your boss lie to the camera like this. We never discussed any increase in pay. Immediately the conversation was that I already made enough. I never made a number offer. Two minutes later, he tweeted the following. If you're not going to change my contract for the heavyweight move, at least have the decency to be honest with the fans. Three minutes later. I was over the situation, but I'm not going to sit back and allow Dana to lie to the fans. I never asked for an absurd amount of money. That's one minute later. Absolute. John took a little break from tweeting on it to post a video of him biking, but his anger was not fully released. At 11.53 p.m. that same night, he continued with the following. I'm not going to give up hope the way I'm taking this whole thing is. At UFC, don't want to budget the John Jones heavyweight move up right now. They should have just said that. Lying on me and saying I asked for too much, it's just unfair. That was unnecessary. Three minutes later. You already let me down a bit by shutting down this Francis mega fight. Don't add salt to the wound by telling the fans something that's not true. Four minutes later. If you're wondering, I'm not fighting with the UFC. I'm not mad at Dana or beefing. Just surprised he went that route. I said my piece. I'm over it. At this point, all was quiet on the Western Front. That was until the next afternoon. Dana addressed the situation with the media before UFC on ESPN 9. Well, speaking of money issues, let's, can we ask about John Jones? I mean, he says that... You know, you're not being truthful about what happened. Yeah. He wasn't asking for an absurd amount of money. What, 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 what can you say about that situation? Yeah, it's, it's fun uh, working out in the gym in the morning, seeing tweets from John Jones saying I'm lying. We have text messages from John Jones. It's not like I can't prove what I'm saying is true. We have text messages from him, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put his text messages out in the press. I could. If John Jones wants to sit down and take a lie detector test about who's lying and who's not, we can do that too. So, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go there with this guy. The guy's, the guy's made a lot of money. Made a lot of money. If you look at John Jones' track record, 
Show me somebody that has the track record this guy has and has made the money that John Jones has made. Doesn't happen. Um, you know, and it's not like I'm out here on some, some smash John Jones crusade. Um, I like John. I'm the one actually saying there is no debate. There is no argument. He's the GOAT. You know, what, no matter what you think of his last two fights, the three people that matter said he won the fight. So, you know, the guy's gone undefeated. He's fought everybody. He's fought all the best in the world, despite what he's been doing to himself outside of the octagon. Um, going through legal battles, you know, you know, drugs and alcohol, all the things that's gone on with John Jones, he is still the world champion, you know? Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. Dana then specifically addresses what the conflict in the tweets was about. I know we don't like to talk hard figures, but can you give us an idea, like a percentage-wise or something? Like, what kind of increase was he asking for that you say is absurd? He says it never even got discussed. Uh, I'll quote him and what he had said to my lawyer. He told my lawyer he wants what Deontay Wilder was paid. What was that? I don't call the boxing curse. Does anybody know? Twenty-five million. I think it was $30 million. First off, remember that figure, $30 million. That will be incredibly important going forward. Let's see what Jones had to say next at 4.22 p.m. the same day. If you're going to stick to these lies, I'm going to stick to defending myself. Please have your lawyer, Hunter Campbell, release those text messages. Two minutes later, don't be a f***ing liar. My reputation has already taken enough hits. I don't need this Dana. I never asked for Deontay Wilder numbers. And how about since Deontay is making 30 million, we settle for half of that. Since you said I'm the goat and everything, 16 minutes later. And if I wanted to compare money to someone else, I would compare money to my brothers. I see firsthand the way the NFL treats their champion athletes. There's a huge difference. I've kept my mouth shut my entire career. Three minutes after. Do I make five plus per fight? Yes. Should I stick to that number for my super fights? No. If you don't agree with me, you just don't know business. I certainly didn't ask for 30. Never even threw out a number. Then he posted more biking videos. Things quieted down again until Dana reignited them a day later in his post-fight press conference. And last thing for me, um, obviously yesterday you spoke about John Jones, and then as soon as you finished talking, he basically tweeted out saying that if you want to, he'd like you to show those texts that you supposedly have and still basically saying that you're not telling the truth about the interaction. Any plans to show those texts? What do you do? Who do you believe? It's up to you guys. Yeah. What I lie for? What, what, what do I gain in lying about it? Why, why, why would I lie? It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, obviously he's fired up right now. And he had a great talk yesterday with, with uh, Hunter, my lawyer, who's, you know, he, he, he's really close to John Jones and likes him. And they have a good relationship. And they had a good talk yesterday, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. I really don't care. I could care less, to be honest with you. So. Like, actually a good talk? Like, actually a good talk, a positive talk, not? Yeah, they had a good talk. They had a good talk yesterday. The, those, guys are, those guys are tight. John Jones and I have always had this, you know. I, I'm, I'm always looking at what, what John Jones could have been, you know. Could have been, he could have been the LeBron of the sport. He could have been literally that big. Um, you know, the stuff that he's been through to show up and think he, you know, basically demand $15 million or $20 million or $30 million, it's crazy. So he can do whatever he wants to do. He can sit out, he can, he can fight, he can whatever, you know? You know how this works. You guys know how I am. John Jones can say whatever he wants publicly. It's his is God-given right here in America. He can say whatever he wants. Um, um, and when he's ready to come back and fight, he can. I saw a lot of people saying, like, why can't he make Deontay Wilder money? I mean, like, like he, I mean, you said he's the greatest of all time, right? So, Being the greatest of all time doesn't mean you get $30 million. Being able to sell. John Jones has done a lot of things to himself. He's saying, in one of his tweets, he was saying that I tarnished his, I tarnished you? You've done a very good job of tarnishing you. Now, I haven't done that. Um, and, uh, you know, Hunter told him, I'll walk in, you can come in here and walk through the numbers. I'll walk you through all the numbers. And he says, I don't give a f what the numbers are. 
I want what I want and that's it. It's not how life works. Why don't you guys fly back and tell your boss, I don't give a fuck what this company makes. This is what I want. You're going to give it to me. See how that works out for you. Interestingly, Dana directly stated that Jones spoke the day prior to Hunter Campbell, who is chief legal counsel of the UFC. Undoubtedly, Jones called Hunter to debate the veracity of the back and forth he and Dana were having. Dana really paints a picture there of a sort of good cop, bad cop strategy between he and Hunter with Jones. John goes on a multi-day tweet rampage, going back and forth between posting on politics and the situation with the UFC. I will highlight a couple key tweets that I see as essential before we move forward in time. First, John denies the legitimacy of the texts. He complains about Dana's unprofessional actions of taking negotiations public, before threatening the UFC to release him if he so overpaid. He even directly states he would make more money in a boxing match if released. Finally, for this tweet storm, John appears to retire from MMA and anoints the Jan vs. Reyes fight as the new undisputed light heavyweight champion, but doesn't officially relinquish his title. I think it's really important to take a moment to analyze here. Based on all public accounts, it seems the negotiation went as follows. John again repeated his interest in moving up to heavyweight, but wanted to gain a larger payday, the numbers of which are completely obscured, leading to Dana taking the negotiations public, creating a rift between the UFC and Dana's self-proclaimed greatest MMA fighter of all time. Whatever your feelings of the characters involved, it is hard to argue that Dana's actions were professional. By any normal standard, in any large business of the UFC's caliber or greater, actions like Dana's are a massive no-no. But hey, it's the fight game, right? We now move forward in time a couple months to the night of DC and Stipe completing their trilogy. John was live tweeting his thoughts during the fight, effectively bringing himself back into the limelight. A very smart move on his part. In the immediate aftermath of DC losing and officially retiring, Jones began tweeting that he had officially decided to move up to heavyweight. No doubt a dig at his former rival in order to take attention away from DC getting his flowers at the end of his historic and legendary combat sports career. This specific tweet I consider to be essential to the long term of this story. We can gather that Jones is already planning a fight with Stipe for the title, and is using his tweeting during the event to create some buzz around the prospect of his debut occurring versus him. All the while, though, a predator lurks in the shadows, intelligently attempting to not let this opportunity go to waste. Francis then shifts his attention to Jones, recognizing the opportunity to put his own backing behind Jones's proposed superfight concept while also playing down Jones's want to face Stipe next. Francis then goes silent. No response from Jones. Let's see what Dana has to say in his post-fight presser. Obviously, we're not going to match make tonight, as usual, but John Jones jumped on Twitter and said, coming to heavyweight, you know, I'll see that title soon. As you sit here, I mean, does that make sense? A heavyweight title fight for John Jones? Or you got Ngannou out there who I'm certainly believes that he's next. I mean, is there something that stands out to you right now is like, this would be the way to go? Francis is definitely next. I mean, you, you can't jump over Francis. Francis has been out there destroying everybody. And if you look at how long ago uh, it was that he got that title shot, he's worked his way back. It, 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 it belongs to Francis Ngannou. But yeah, John Jones going to heavyweight is very interesting. So the boss's words are heard. Francis is next. Importantly, Dana says one other thing, though. Um, with John Jones, I know you said in an interview yesterday that you were waiting for a reply from him about the light heavyweight title. That's the first thing we heard from him right there, is on, on social media. That he wants to go to heavyweight? Yeah. You say Ngannou's next, so would you rather he defend the title and then move up if he wants to, or do you guys still have negotiations to work out, because I know things aren't the best between you at the moment? Uh, yeah, I don't know. There isn't anything I'd rather have him do. I mean, um, the guy either wants to fight or he doesn't. If he wants to fight, he'll let us know, and if he doesn't, he won't. The Monday after the fight, August 17th, 2020, Brett Okamoto tweets the following at 2.22 p.m. As stated in the tweet, the details, specifically if it's for a unified title, are still to be worked out. Less than two hours later, the following tweets from Jones. John Jones' term as light heavyweight champion is now at an official end. After months of speculation, he officially vacates. One day later, on August 18th of 2020, Dana says the following at his post-Dana White Contender Series press conference. 
some obviously outside contender series news yesterday. John Jones announced he was vacating the light heavyweight title. Is that official? Is that it's official? Yeah. Okay. So I actually tonight while we were here, I went live on Sports Center in between one of the fights and announced all that. So Dominic Reyes, Jan Blagovitz for the title. <coughs> yeah, it's for the vacant title. Okay, cool. John then said negotiations starting with you guys about heavyweight. Is that true? Could that be his next move? Well, I know that John right now wants to take time and do things that he wants to do. Um, I mean, if you follow him on Instagram, he's been doing a lot of shooting. He likes to work with these attack dogs and lifts a lot of weights. And I think he's having fun, you know, living his life a little bit. And I think when this whole heavyweight thing plays out, we'll see what, what works for him. So is that the move, having Garni versus Miocic and then see if John can slip in there? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the right outcome is going to be or the right, you know, but we'll see. Dana confirms the news, directly states that Jones isn't yet preparing for heavyweight, and overall doesn't offer us much more information on Jones's future. Four days later, Jones tweets the following. The Predator implies Francis, whose nickname is The Predator. All goes quiet again. The UFC has implied that Stipe vs. Francis 2 is their next move, and nothing to the contrary is indicated. A couple months later, Dana says the following. And speaking of that Volkanovski Ortega fight, uh, along with the report of that coming out today, there was some talk of maybe Stipe Miocic and Francis Ngannou being the main event for that March 27th card. Where do we stand on that? Is it March 27th? Is it done? You did it. Congrats. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thanks, Dan. Yep. I did. The rematch is now official. Two months later, the fight occurs, and Francis wins in spectacular fashion. At long last, Francis is the UFC heavyweight champion. Not one to allow a fighter to get their flowers without inserting himself into the conversation, Jones has been live tweeting the event. Now, I want you to enjoy this and I want you to celebrate this victory, but I also want to talk to you about the future. John Jones sent a tweet out. It said, let's play, yeah, baby. baby. Uh, what do you think about a potential? Oh, another one was show me the money. What do you think about a potential fight with one of the greatest, if not the greatest, mixed martial arts fighters in the history of the sport, John Jones, now moving up to heavyweight? That will be your first title defense. The two tweets show that Jones is interested, but also is still looking for that raise. A key takeaway for you, the viewer, is the following. Notice how Francis responds to the opportunity to fight Jones. Absolutely. I mean, uh, for my opinion, John John is uh, the uh, greatest of all the time uh, for mixed martial arts. Um, and him moving up is going to be a good thing. It's a challenge that I will take and put it on my record. It will be a very good challenge for me, very good thing on my resume. Uh, but for this time, it's going to be the challenger. I am the champ. He's coming up and uh, looking for me. So I'm ready. Anytime soon, you know, even summer, I'll be here ready to fight in July or August. Whenever they are ready, I'm ready. He says something like, show the money, show the money and we go, baby. I'm here. Francis, that will be one of the biggest fights, if not the biggest fight in the history of the sport. Congratulations, sir. One other key point, Francis said he would fight Jones in the summer, whether July or August. But what did Dana have to say about the situation? Dana, new uh, heavyweight champion of the world. Pretty impressive stuff from Francis Nagano. I mean, I think everybody's still soaking it in, but give us your initial reaction to that. Yeah, no, he looked damn good. He looked incredible, man. And uh, obviously, you saw a lot of things from him tonight that we hadn't seen from him in the, in, the, in the past. Head kicks, leg kicks, really good grappling, takedown defense, scary. Yeah. Next, John Morgan asked Dana his thoughts on Jones being the next fight for Francis. And I got to ask you what appeals next, right? Because Stipe, we talked about it, greatest of all time. We said if he loses, he'd probably deserve a rematch. But, man, the idea of a John Jones fight seems awfully exciting right now. And John came out, tweeted, said, show me the money. What, what appeals to you most? Because it, it seems like that would be a, an amazing super fight. If I'm John Jones and I'm home watching this fight, I start moving to 85. <laughs> <laughs> But that wasn't all. You think, you think that's a fight that you'd like to put together next? I, mean, sure. I know we don't matchmake, but that sure does seem exciting. Listen, I could sit here all day and tell you, you know, what show me the money mean? 
I tell you guys this all the time. If you can say you want to fight somebody, you know, but do you really want to? Yeah. But back to the man of the hour, Francis Ngannou. Is it also an added bonus that, you know, Francis tends to finish his fights really quickly so he can be more active than we've seen the heavyweight title pitch have been for the last few years? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the other thing is that Francis likes to stay active and Francis likes to fight. At the press conference the other day when we were talking about, you know, he'll, he'll call and just say he, he wants fights. Just give me somebody, I'll fight. So the guy likes to stay busy. He likes to be active. He likes to fight. And... Uh, He's fun to watch. Unsurprisingly, Jones was watching and responded to those prior comments in real time. Hey, Danny, back here uh, to your to your right. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess John Jones is uh, is watching. He he tweeted since uh, you've been up there. He said, uh, "Go to 185. I didn't gain all this weight for no reason." Laughing face. I like it. <laughs> that it's, sounds serious. That sounds serious, then, John. <laughs> Call Hunter right now. Is that we the can fight? make that fight tonight, John. Call Hunter right now. Key to that last part. Call Hunter right now. We can make that fight tonight. The follow-up is important for our next point. That's, that's the fight to make, would, would you say? What's that? J- Jones and Ganu is the fight to make, right? Well, Derek Lewis is the fight to make. But if John Jones really wants that fight, listen, it's one thing to go out and, and, and tweet and say you want it and I put on the weight and I did this and that. Do you want the fight? I, I promise you. We can call Derek Lewis or one of these other heavyweights, and they want the fight. If John Jones really wants the fight, John Jones knows he can get the fight. All he's got to do is call and, and do it. Like I said, it's easy to, to, to say you want the fight, but if you really want the fight, Francis Ngannou is the heavyweight champion of the world right now. All he's got to do is pick up the phone and call Hunter, and we can get the deal done. Again, Dana reiterates, all he has to do is pick up the phone. I am speculating, of course, but I imagine that if John had called, Lewis vs. Ngannou 2 would have been scrapped immediately. Dana then is asked an interesting question about where the next fight for Francis will be. Hey, hey Dana, with the star power of Francis Ngannou and cities opening back up, is there an ideal location you'd have him have his first title defense? For Francis? Uh, where's his first title defense? Yeah, an ideal location with cities open. I don't know. We, we got to see, uh, as, as, as this stuff, st- uh, you know, what I'm hoping is we go to Jacksonville, then we go to Texas, and then, you know, Vegas, and then we just keep rolling, you know, with, with, with full sold-out events. So, um, obviously, you know, Francis would be a, a Vegas, New York City, Fight Island guy you know what I mean one of those of course it's difficult for someone in Dana's position to plan due to the logistical challenges present during the pandemic but he does directly state that Francis is a Vegas New York or Fight Island type fighter 